Hi folks, Russ Scala here from Scala Precision Health. Today we're going to take a really deep dive into what's killing bodybuilders. Uh, I was tasked with this uh, question a few months ago. I worked with a few bodybuilders here in town that had something called endothelial dysfunction. That went to their cardiologist and they found that part of their heart, uh, part of their coronary arteries were becoming blocked. Now let me give you a little backstory. I've been studying heart disease probably since 1975. As a paramedic, I hit the streets and responded to cardiac arrests. Um, once I got through at grad school, I traveled to a lot of the functional medicine laboratories, met with leading cardiologists around the United States, and uh, developed treatment protocols for uh, people that had stints, bypasses. I even worked with heart transplant patients. So you can imagine, even as a kid, I was fascinated with what caused heart attacks. Well, now I got a lot of that information and we're focusing on the bodybuilders today. What actually is causing endothelial dysfunction? The endothelial lining is the lining of the coronary arteries that uh, release nitric oxide. So we look throughout history, a lot of bodybuilders have passed away at a very young age. They've had organ failure, uh, they've had strokes, they have kidney damage, and obviously some of them use illicit substances as well. I'm not here to judge anybody. I studied the bodybuilders intensely because I developed a muscle wasting program for NASA and SpaceX. When they make that Mars trip, you can see that on the Russ Scala YouTube channel. So I've been fascinated with muscle wasting. Um, if an 80-year-old woman goes into the hospital and she breaks the hip, the reason she dies is because she doesn't have enough muscle. Muscles are a reservoir for fuel. Every day you need 21 minerals, 13 vitamins, 8 amino acids, 2 essential fats. If you don't have that in your muscle or your intestinal tract is not absorbing that, you're going to mine it from your own, own muscle tissue. When I, I actually damaged my body and I had to go to the bodybuilders because traditional medicine didn't have the information. So I studied the anabolics starting 10 years ago. I looked at what the bodybuilders were doing. Like I said, I'm, I'm, I'm not judging anybody. They've done fascinating work in maintaining 10, 20, 30 pounds of muscle mass. But, but, but is that healthy? And I think that's what we're going to dive in today. Um, I've have a, I have advanced testing, advanced treatment protocols at Scala Precision Health at, you know, at my research center in Winter Park, Florida. And I'm always willing to share our research. I share it with gyms. I give presentations. Bodybuilders call me all the time because we have blood work that they can't get from their doctors. And, and you know, their doctors are used to treating old people. Um, they're not used to treating these bodybuilders that are really metabolic astronauts. What I want to do is educate the bodybuilders on, on, on where the problems can lie. Now I think growth hormone IGF-1 and insulin are very beneficial, but when you overproduce it and you're stacking more muscle, this is where the problem comes in. But when, you, when you're eating a high amount of calories and you're, and you're trying to put on um, you know, 20, 30 pounds of muscle mass, you elevate something called oxidative stress. And this is what happens to the bodybuilders. This is why they age. The men and women bodybuilders looks, look, age quickly. So oxidative stress, you see it right there. When you cut an apple in half and that apple gets brown, okay, and you take the other part of the apple and you spray it with uh, 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 lemon juice, the apple that's getting brown, that's called oxidative stress. That happens on a cellular level okay to these bodybuilders when they're mixing and, and taking anabolics and what happens with the oxidative stress and the high blood glucose and high insulin it causes dna mutations on a cellular level okay the dna mutations lead to cancer so if you think about it you're elevating insulin which is a growth hormone you may be taking growth hormone and igf1 all can accelerate cancer in a cancer patient okay Growth hormone IGF-1 and insulin can elevate vascular endothelial growth factor, which are the veins and arteries that support cancer cells. Okay, now I'm not saying every bodybuilder is going to get cancer, but understand on a cellular level what, what, what happens. So when the heart's beating, those coronary arteries are flexing and bending around, um, around each heartbeat. So a lot of bodybuilders have high blood pressure. And again, this is because the endothelial lining is not releasing nitric oxide. So let, let's take a look at the heart. Okay, what we're going to talk about are the bodybuilders obviously are using anabolics to an extreme degree. Again, not judging here. I just want to protect them and get them out of the railroad tracks. I have advanced testing. I went to the research lab called Athrotech that developed one of the first cholesterol lipid particle size testing. I met with Dr. Kenneth French for eight hours, the chief lipid science officer, and I've, I've wanted to do consulting with them. They didn't hire me. They hired somebody else. So 
I got kicked in the ass, but but I learned a lot from those guys. So what 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 we want to understand is cholesterol is like a big beach ball. And one of them is called lipoprotein A. And lipoprotein A is actually atherogenic. It could damage the endothelial lining, okay? It's almost like a, a repair protein. So what we have here are the coronary arteries that surround the heart. And like I said, after the heart beats 100 to 80 to 100,000 times a day, we know from bioidentical hormonal replacement, men with low testosterone can improve their heart function by taking testosterone and being dosed properly. Now, we don't treat testosterone in isolation like all these low T clinics. You've got to look at the hypothalamus, pituitary, adrenal, gonadal axis. It's a four-legged stool. Most of the guys that treat testosterone in isolation, like these low T clinics or these Dalai Lamas out there on the internet, they're doing you a disservice. Remember, every athlete, every bodybuilder, every guy with low testosterone is biochemically unique and you need a program customized to them and that's what we do better than anybody. We get clients from the Mayo Clinic and I love those calls. When somebody been to four or five doctors and then we're called in, that gets me out of bed in the morning, trust me. So when we look at low testosterone, okay, we see that shear stress can be a problem and let me tell you about shear stress real quick for the bodybuilders using anabolics. To maintain 20, 30, 40 pounds of muscle mass, every time the heart beats, the left ventricle is so strong, it can, the blood comes out of this aorta and spins down these coronary arteries, it can actually shear, shear pieces of the uh, endothelial lining off. So when it shears pieces of the endothelial lining off, that's called shear stress. And then now the nitric oxide that keeps the arteries dilated, you know, there's a problem. Also understand this, estrogen blockers, estrogen and testosterone and thyroid are very important to keep the coronary arteries dilated. If a, if a bodybuilder is taking an estrogen blocker and he's taking high amounts of uh, testosterone or other anabolics, it's gonna cause imbalances, not only in the coronary arteries, but the arteries to the brain and the arteries to the kidneys. That, that, that's where a lot of damage happens with, these, you know, with the bodybuilders. So we want them to do it safe. Um, I recommend uh, blood work pre and post event. Um, I want to get a baseline on the bodybuilders. I give free consults uh, to just to help them get out of the railroad tracks. So I, I want you to understand that um, advanced glycation, high blood sugar is toxic. Bodybuilders eat three square meals a day and snacks, a lot of protein, 5,000 calories a day. They're spiking their blood sugar, they're spiking their insulin, and that, that causes damage and accelerates the aging process over time. We know the only thing out there that actually extends aging, thanks to David Sinclair's long, new book called Longevity, is intermittent fasting. And I know bodybuilders don't like to hear that because if you fast or you go a long time without food, you lose muscle mass. So is carrying that much muscle healthy? Look at Arnold Schwarzenegger now, had heart problems, look at Arnold Schwarzenegger then. I think we need to rethink this stuff. And again, I'm not judging anybody. I use the bodybuilders, the protocols. I interviewed hundreds of bodybuilders. I was a research director for a major pharmacy that delivered hundreds of millions of dollars all over the United States of growth hormone. It's in my book, American Biohacker. I've trained over 600 physicians on how to do uh, growth hormone, testosterone, IGF-1 effectively. So I understand the power of this stuff, but I also understand the trouble you could get into with it. Again, I'm not, I'm not judging anybody. I'm not against anything you're doing. I just want you to live a long time because there's not a lot of doctors out there with that information. So when we think about the coronary arteries, when we think about the arteries in the brain, when we think about the arteries going to the kidneys, the anabolic steroids can cause problems with the endothelial lining. The anabolic steroids can cause problems with something called hypercoagulability. The thicker your blood is, the more damage it could do to the lining of the arteries. Bioidentical hormonal replacement therapy for men with low testosterone protects the heart, it protects the brain. So I'm gonna walk you through a few mental things that happens to uh, the bodybuilders that I think they should resonate with, and then we'll move on to the next uh, chart here. Okay, folks, we want to understand how bodybuilding can impact your brain chemistry. Now, let, let me just tell you, back in the day, I was a paramedic attached to a SWAT team. Um, I responded to emergency calls. Um, I've had co-workers commit suicide, uh, police and fire both. Uh, I responded to some of the most horrendous scenes you could imagine. I was covered in brain matter. I was drinking a lot back then. I didn't want to talk to any counselors because I wanted to get promoted. I didn't want that being in my file because they would say I was crazy. So I had to deal with a lot of tough bullshit early on in my career and didn't have any 
anybody to go to. So what I did is I got put on the critical incident stress debriefing team um, in uh, 1992. So we had a way to start studying how stress impacts the body. Now it's 2020 and I'm here to try to help the bodybuilders. And what I want to say to the bodybuilders is this, physical, mental, and emotional stress suppress all your hormones by elevation of cortisol. It's just a fact. You don't need to read the book, Why Zebras, Why Zebras Don't Get Ulcers. You don't need to read the book called uh, Potatoes Not Prozac. So that, that's about 700 pages I'm going to save you with this chart here. There you go, right in red, chronic stress shuts off growth hormone, lowers all your sex steroids and your thyroid function. So if we know that we want to treat the hypothalamus, pituitary, adrenal, gonadal axis, that's a four-legged stool. With the anabolics that you're taking, you're really pushing that, trying to put on 30, you know, 10, 20, 30 pounds of muscle mass. It's safer to be lean. Um, it's safer to be lean like a swimmer, but obviously during, during your competition, that, that, that really doesn't make any sense. The intestinal tract is considered the second brain. Crohn's disease, irritable bowel, people that have problems with their intestinal track have low growth hormone. So if you're not what you eat and you are what you absorb, like I said, every day you need about 21 minerals, 13 vitamins, eight amino acids, two essential fats. If you're not pulling that out of food in your intestinal tract, you're going to be mining it from your own muscle tissue. So what I learned along the way with my deep dive into growth hormones, sarcopenia, muscle wasting, catabolism, and anabolism, building muscle, I found out the intestinal tract is extremely important. That's why we test that coming in the door. So if you're using growth hormone and you're spending two, three grand a month and you wanna drop the price on growth hormone, let's test your intestinal tract, re-inoculate the flora. Let's make sure there's no imbalances because if we rebalance your gut, your IGF-1 levels or your growth hormone levels will come up. That just makes a lot of sense. We also look at the mitochondria. There's something called mitochondrial dysfunction. Mitochondria are, are, are in every cell in the body. Now, if you have a bicep and you're curling a 50 pound weight, understand that the muscle fibers in the bicep in each each mitochondria may have 300 mitochondria. Mitochondria creates ATP out of proteins, fats, and carbohydrates, all right? Now, a mitochondria in a heart cell that beats 100,000 times a day, instead of having 300 mitochondria in a muscle cell, a heart cell may have 3,000. The most metabolically active tissue in your body is your heart and your brain. Where do bodybuilders have a lot of their problem? heart and brain. So we test the mitochondrial function. We test the multiple metabolic markers that, that are not tested in traditional medicine. And we look at mitochondrial function. We look at how well the mitochondria is, is creating energy out of fats, proteins, and carbohydrates. So you can, you can understand how the ketogenic diet and using key, nutritional ketosis, the metabolism seems to function better at the nutritional level uh, using using ketones. And there's a lot of controversy back and forth. Like I said, we drilled down this research for NASA and SpaceX. I studied Scott Kelly's book, his first astronaut to spend a year in space. Um, they didn't test his hormone, growth hormone, insulin levels. He ate six meals a day up there that was high carbohydrates. He came back home and he could barely walk for three weeks. So NASA said that they really don't understand what's happening in space yet. Interesting, when you immerse yourself in two different fields like I do, bodybuilding, endurance athletes, and the muscle wasting program in space. A lot of the information that I get to build a program for an astronaut that's gonna be in space uh, for a year comes from the bodybuilders. Okay, so, so folks, look at, look at the dichotomy here. Um, chronic stress shuts off IGF-1 insulin-like growth factor. We need insulin-like growth factor elevated by testosterone and growth hormone um, to grow muscle tissue. Now, if you happen to be a cancer patient and you elevate IGF-1, you will accelerate the growth of cancer cells. Cancer cells will grow in a high glucose environment. Cancer cells grow because IGF-1 elevates something called vascular endothelial growth factor. A cancer cell is immortal. How is a cancer cell being immortal? It's fed glucose all the time and, and it mutates throughout the body. So we know now the new research, thanks to Dr. Tom Zeifried, hyperbaric therapy, fasting and the ketogenic diet, which all suppress blood sugar, is a great tool to suppress cancer. He's done it and, 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 and you can see that on YouTube. But my point is, as a bodybuilder and you're pushing the outside of the envelope, elevating IGF-1, think about what you're doing to your metabolic pathways. That's why the, the, the testing is so important. Um, you can see the Russ Scala YouTube channel for more data. Scala Precision Health here in Winter Park, Florida. We're at 7151 University Boulevard. And check out my book, American Biohacker, uh, on Amazon. And I I hope uh, I didn't put anybody to sleep. I hope this resonated with you. So um, keep an eye out for us. The time is now for you to take control of your health. Everybody and everybody has a story. Let us find out yours today.